Tonight we're focusing in on Zoom with Galaxy AI on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Ah, a baby tiger. Check out his claws as he prepares to pounce on that frog. Close one, but not as close as this Zoom. We can literally count the whiskers and... Oh look, Mum's here. Good thing I'm nowhere nearby. Go wild with Galaxy AI on the new S24 Ultra and zoom in on the epic day or night. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Greetings, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson across the nation. Glad to have you with me wherever you might be. I hope you got blue skies. Finally, finally, I got blue skies. Maybe your chickens will start laying eggs again. <laughs> the phone number, if you want to be on the program, 877-973-7425. Uh, we must begin with Kamala Harris. I actually, I wanted to talk about the economy. I wanted to talk about Kamala Harris last hour, but we got talking about the balloon. We got to talk about Kamala before I talk about the economist. I will take your phone calls, 877-973-7425. I, there's no reason to even be diplomatic about this. Kamala Harris sucks. She may be a very nice person. She may be a very nice person personally, but Kamala Harris is really bad at being vice president. Just for example, one one small example here. Yesterday was the Sunday before the State of the Union address. Yesterday was the Sunday before the State of the Union address. It should be notable that Kamala Harris was not everywhere as a surrogate for the president of the United States in the run-up to his State of the Union address. She was not. And now the New York Times has yet another article on just how bad it is. Here's the headline. Kamala Harris is trying to define her vice presidency. Even her allies are tired of waiting. Ms. Harris is struggling to carve out a lane for herself in what may be one of the most consequential periods for the vice presidency. This this is a today piece. The problem here is that it is running today, but there have been a series of pieces and a series of news outlets, including the Washington Post and the New York Times and others over the past month about her problems. This is just the latest. Kamala Harris was frustrated. The text of a speech she had been given to deliver in Chicago to the nation's biggest teachers union was just another dreary scripted talk that said little of any consequence. As Air Force Two made its way to the Midwest over the summer, the vice president told her staff she wanted to say something more significant, more direct. She brandished a Rolling Stone magazine article about the backlash against Florida school officials after new legislation barring the discussion of gender identity in the classroom. The teachers she was about to address were on the front lines of the nation's culture wars, Ms. Harris told her staff. They were the same ones on the front lines of school shootings. Just blandly ticking through federal funding for education would not be enough. The plane was just over an hour out from Chicago, but she said they needed to start over. By the time she landed, she had a more spirited version of the speech in hand, accusing extremist so-called leaders of the Republican Party of taking away rights and freedoms. Ms. Harris's small airborne rebellion that day encapsulated the trap she finds herself in. She has already made history as the first woman, the first African-American, and the first Asian-American ever to serve as president. She has still struggled to define her role much beyond that legacy. Um, now let me skip down and just read you one more here. The painful reality for Ms. Harris is that in private conversations over the last few months, dozens of Democrats in the White House, on Capitol Hill, and around the nation, including some who helped put her on the party's 2020 ticket, said she had not risen to the challenge of proving herself as a future leader of the party, much less the country. Even some Democrats, whom her own advisors referred reporters to for support of quotes, confided privately that they had lost hope in her. Let me say this one again. 
this last sentence in this paragraph of a very lengthy story that goes on and on and on and on and on. This is a, a very lengthy piece. A very lengthy piece. And in, in it includes this sentence. This sentence is in the New York Times about Kamala Harris and a piece about her leadership, her being vice president. Get this. Again, this is from the New York Times. Even some Democrats whom her own advisors referred reporters to for support of quotes confided privately they had lost hope in her. That's the New York Times reporting that. In other words, Kamala Harris's staff said you can go get good quotes about the vice president from these people. The New York Times went to the people Kamala Harris's staff referred them to. And when they spoke to those people, those people said, no, we've lost hope in her. (sighs) Wow. Kamala Harris is a disaster. She is a political disaster. Her speeches are so dumb that even I think Kamala Harris realizes how dumb her speeches are. Kamala Harris's speeches, they're just not good. Uh, There was one I found the other day of her speaking, and she was speaking about, I'm seeing if I can pull it up now. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, Let's see, can I pull this up? Does this actually work here? Which brings me to May 30th, 2020. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I, I got to pull this up because this is so bad. You're not going to actually believe how bad this is until you hear it for yourself. Um, and I genuinely was stunned that this is a speech that Kamala Harris would give. This is one of the most cringeworthy things I have ever heard a political leader say in my life. This is Kamala Harris uh, giving a speech about NASA and the rocket program, and it is... To May 30th, 2020. Bob and Doug returned to the Kennedy Space Center. They suited up, they waved to their families, and they rode an elevator up nearly 20 stories. They strapped in to their seats and waited as the tanks beneath them filled with tens of thousands of gallons of fuel. And then they launched. Yeah, they did. (laughs) That's a typical Kamala Harris speech. She laughs at lines like that. And what's so funny is she's actually doing that. They suit up and and she does this and they rode an elevator up and she launches her finger up and then it's like a fist bump. They launched. Yeah, they did. And she points to the crowd laughing. She wasn't talking to an elementary school class. She was talking to grownups and she did that. Kamala Harris is a bad politician. Kamala Harris never made it to Iowa. She never made it to Iowa. You know, she didn't have a lot of political experience in Washington either. Kamala Harris had been an attorney, a district attorney in in, um, San Francisco. She became the attorney general in California. She got elected to the United States Senate. She wasn't there that long, and she decided she would run for president. She believed the press about herself, and that's part of the problem in Washington, is never believe the press about yourself. But she did. This is, again, from the New York Times. Most Democrats interviewed who insisted on anonymity to avoid alienating the White House said flatly they did not think Ms. Harris could win the presidency in 2024. Some said the party's biggest challenge would be finding a way to sideline her without inflaming key Democratic constituencies that would take offense. 
Now with Mr. Biden appearing all but certain to run again, the concern over Ms. Harris has shifted to whether she will be a political liability for the ticket. Given that Mr. Biden at 80 is already the oldest president in American history, Republicans would most likely make Ms. Harris, who is 58, a prime attack line, arguing that a vote for Mr. Biden may in fact be a vote to put her in the Oval Office. In other words... Democrats are now thinking instead of having a Joe Biden problem, they have a Kamala Harris problem, and how can they push her out and get a different vice president? Now, the same thing happened, you should understand. Uh, There were all sorts of rumors that Donald Trump would push out uh, Mike Pence. There were rumors that Obama would push out Biden. There were rumors that Bush would push out Cheney. This happens every four years uh, when a vice president's um, when a vice president's critics gang up on them in the press. The most significant one was 1992 when Dan Quayle's critics went after him. The difference between Quayle and Harris is only that the media is sympathetic to Democrats. Otherwise, Kamala Harris would be getting the Dan Quayle treatment right now. And it was beyond dispute, Dan Quayle is a very smart, bright guy, uh, but the vice presidential office did him no favors in making him look competent. Kamala Harris, I don't know that she's bright, but you don't get to the vice presidency of the United States without having some smarts, I would think. And she's just not good at it. Every time she opens her mouth, she says something absurd. Every time she does something, she winds up giving one of those awkward laughs. She's just not good at the job of vice president. She's not good at being in the limelight. And her staff behind the scenes has leaked terrible things about her. They've said she's unprepared. She doesn't do the prep. She doesn't put in the time for the work. When it blows up in her face, she yells at her staff. She blames her staff for everything. She's had massively high staff turnover. And this goes back to her time in the Senate when the rumors have been she's an extraordinarily difficult person to work with who doesn't have the self-awareness to know that she's just not all that bright. And now you've got Democrats. And again, this is the key point here is that the Democrats, her own advisors refer reporters to for favorable quotes about Kamala Harris, said they've lost hope in her. But Biden can't really make a change. The Democrats have become too intersectional, have they not? You throw out the first Asian-American black female vice president. I mean, Kamala Harris is BIPOC. This is what all the whites use these days. The, the rich white liberals, BIPOC, black indigenous people of color, the BIPOCs. Kamala Harris is like the BIPOC in chief. You can't throw the BIPOC in chief out the door. You, you can't do that without alienating the BIPOC people of America. You're going to have deep pieces from the New York Times about how if she were a man, he wouldn't do this. If she were white, he wouldn't do this. He's kind of stuck with her. You brought her to the dance, Joe. You're stuck with her. And Democrats are signaling behind the scenes of the New York Times, you need to get rid of her. And you can't get rid of her. But the Republicans will hold her over your head come 2024. And now, Deep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. Talking about the significance of the passage of time. Right, the significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time. That was Deep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. If you own a small to medium-sized business that kept employees on payroll through COVID, you may have a big cash refund waiting for you. The employee retention credit is a tax credit of up to $26,000 per employee, and now more businesses than ever qualify. The experts at RefundsPro.com specialize in cutting through the red tape of qualifying for this government program. Most of their refunds are over $100,000. 
even businesses that have received PPP funds may be eligible, and there are absolutely no fees unless you receive a refund. There's no reason not to apply. If your business experienced shutdowns, limited capacity, supply chain challenges, or even reduced revenue due to COVID, you likely qualify. RefundsPro.com has already helped hundreds of businesses, so don't lose the refund you're owed by missing the deadline. Get started today with the free five-minute questionnaire at refunds with an s refundspro.com that's refunds with an s pro.com hello there it is eric erickson here um i i got a programming note uh for all of you that i just discovered and i'm also i was just about to tell jim down the line and and now i'll tell all of you as i'm telling jim i'm not going to be here tomorrow um so every three months, you all know the routine. If you're a long-term listener, my wife has her oncology appointment. And normally I, I will record the first hour of the show on Monday night or Tuesday morning. They're always on a Tuesday. So I sound live and then I are done by noon. And it takes me 20 minutes to get from the, um, from the hospital to the, my flagship station, WSB takes about 20 minutes to get from memory to my office so I can do the show. And they've actually just sent my wife a message saying that we can't even get in to see the doctor tomorrow until about one o'clock, um, that all, all of her schedule and everything is messed up. So all of that is to say, um, during COVID, I was not allowed to go with my wife at all ever. And nobody was, only she could go. And I just, I didn't like that. And I committed myself when I was able to go again that I would go to her appointments. We're we're not expecting anything. I mean, please keep us in your prayers. For those of you who don't know, my wife has a cancer. There's no cure for it. Uh, but she takes a pill every day that keeps the tumors in her lungs from growing. She's got a genetic form of cancer. And so it, 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 the tumors in her lungs don't grow, but the medicine only works for two years. So she's got to go have a scan every three months to make sure the medicine's working. She's been on this medicine for six years. It's still working for her. And, but every three months, metronomic regularity, we do this. Now, now I have to say something else too, and I don't mean this mean. Back away from your keyboard, please. Those of you who wish to email me, to tell me that you know of the miracle cure, whether it's an essential oil or hydrogen peroxide or something else. I know you all mean well, but I immediately flag you as crazy. And some of you are going to email anyway to tell me you know that I think you're nuts, but please hear you out. Here's this thing. And I want to assure you that I have a dynamic spam filtering program. And once you send me this email, you're never, ever in your life going to be able to get another email to me because you can't resist impulse control to tell me if she mixes these essential oils with some hydrogen peroxide. You promise, even though I think you're crazy, it really will work. Give it a try one time and I'll see because there's always someone who can't resist the urge despite me saying that. Hi there. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Well, now, boys and girls, we're going to go off the beaten path (laughs) because it happened. Knew it was going to happen. It always happens. Oh, how do I navigate this? So let's back up. In the last segment, I told you I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Uh, now because uh, my wife's oncology appointments, the scheduling has gotten out of whack and uh, there's just no way for me to be with her when she meets her doctor and then get back to the studio at any reasonable amount of time without pre-recording the whole show. And since it's State of the Union Day, I don't want to pre-record the whole show. Uh, so we will have a guest host tomorrow. And I said, uh, Explained, as most of you know, my wife has a form of lung cancer. It's genetic. She's never smoked in her life and uh, it runs in her family and she got it. And there is a pill that keeps the tumors from growing. And please spare me the emails. And of course, someone decided to email and tell me how snotty it is uh, that I said what I said and to review 
What I said was, please, I know you mean well, but spare me the emails of your essential oil cures mixed with hydrogen peroxide and it comes across as crazy and we've got good treatment and I just, I, they've worn me out. I know you mean well, please don't send them back away from the keyboard. And it's always, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound misogynist or sexist, but it's always a woman who emails back when I say that. And they're always offended that I would be offended. And can I just say, you do not have my wife's cancer, nor do I. And for you to email me and say, I offended you or hurt your feelings because I don't want your mysterious magical cure in my inbox and into my head and you're upset because I'm just trying to help. No, you're not. I know you think you are, but you're not. I can't believe the people who would take offense at that, but it's always somebody. And again, and I'm sorry, and, and ladies, please don't take offense at me, but I am, I'm just telling you, we've been down this road for six years now, and it's always a very well-meaning lady who emails and is always very upset that I did not want the essential oil cure. That I would be, I literally had a woman one time email me and tell me that she couldn't believe I was so selfish given what I'm dealing with. Don't I want my wife actually cured or am I just stringing her along so that I can use this on radio for ratings uh, when really if I would just listen to her, she could give my wife a cure. And I know that this woman meant well and that she's chastising me uh, because she really wants to help my wife. And I just, I don't know what to do with people like this. And so I, I try, I used, I used to ignore it and I know it's me. It's not you because I really used to ignore this stuff and I would just delete the email and it just kept happening. And the thing that bothers me and the reason I bring this up in all honesty, the reason I bring this up is because someone somewhere believes that they are curing their own cancer and they're probably going to die, and they might be convincing other people as well. There are cases, and I want you to know, I know someone who science and medicine failed him, and he began his own research and reading. He had an incurable form of cancer, and he died, but he lived seven years longer than anyone told him he would live, and he had a great quality of life. And even he would say, were he alive, don't go down that road until you've run out of other options. And part of this really is, it gets into this, this postmodern age that we are in. Might as well just now, now that I started, Erickson, come on. So nobody believes anybody anymore. You, you have friends you believe, you, you have celebrity personalities you believe. It may be me, maybe you don't believe a word I say. Maybe, maybe it's Tucker Carlson, maybe it's, God forbid, Rachel Maddow. Uh, but you believe what they say. If they tell you it's true, then by God, it's true, whether or not it is. And a lot of us, and this is probably the worst problem we as a technologically advanced civilization now have is that every single one of you listening is smart in some way. I mean, obviously you're listening to me. Obviously you're smart, <laughs> but in all seriousness, every one of us, regardless of your skill set and your education are smart in some way. You did not go to college. You have no college degree and maybe did not finish high school but you can rebuild a 1968 Mustang better than anybody. You've got a skill set and you are wicked smart when it comes to it. Who cares about your degree? Or you you did go to college and you've got a you are an MD. You you have a medical degree and you are a medical researcher and you know more about smoking meat than anyone in your circle of friends. You're like the guy they go to if you're putting something on the grill or you're putting it on the smoker. They're not 
calling you about uh, brain cancer or aneurysms or heart disease or the common cold. They're calling you because they got a brisket and they need to know how to do it. And you've, you've got a, a wicked smart sense when it comes to medicine, but your friends all know you're the guy you call if you got a problem with the grill. You got a problem, you're, you're trying to grill something. You, you all know what I mean. All of you are smart in some capacity. Here's the problem. So many of us are so smart in so many areas and have information in our pocket with our phone that we have lost the capacity now to discern the areas in which we are not smart. We can go online, we can read a Wikipedia entry, we can read an encyclopedia entry, we can watch stuff on YouTube, we can watch other pieces of information, we can synthesize it, we can comprehend it, we can analyze it, and we can output into our mind a certain level of knowledge with which we are now ignorant that we lack key pieces of information, so we presume ourselves to be knowledgeably, competently knowledgeable about certain areas of our life when we're actually not. Cancer tends to be one of those because so many of us have friends and loved ones who get cancer. We wish to be educated on the subject. And we get online and we watch YouTube videos. You don't get on Google because, I mean, you put in, I've got a rash on my finger, and next thing you know, you're going to die based on what Google tells you. I mean, never. Have you all ever done this? Oh, I, I, here are my symptoms. Here, dear Google, here are my symptoms. What is going on? You're dying. You've got rare wing bur- ringworm botulism. You're, you're going to die. There's no cure. Is your mouth also dry? Yep, you're going to die in 30 minutes. Oh, my gosh. 30 minutes later, you're like, well, Google, you told me I was going to die. Oh, sorry, we got it wrong. Turns out it's, it's this. You're going to die tomorrow. Never Google your symptoms on Google because you're going to die. It's just what the, the default for Google is you're going to die Google, I chipped a tooth. What do I do? Shoot yourself. You're going to die. I mean, just just don't ever Google your health symptoms on Google. So people instead go to YouTube. <laughs> they go to YouTube. And on YouTube. Okay, YouTube, here are my symptoms. Well, you have this rare form of cancer. And if you mix two parts hydrogen peroxide, one part vinegar, and three parts distilled water and drink it five times a day, you will flush the cancer out of your system. But YouTube, it's in my lungs. Doesn't matter. I was, I was actually in a, it was a Publix checkout, not the one I normally go to. I have a great Publix. For those of you not in the Southeast, there's a grocery store chain called Publix. It's wonderful. It, it's the greatest. It's the greatest grocery store chain. And I've been to, to Hebe. I've been to Harris Teeter. I've been, to, I've been to all of them. I love my Publix. I love the people at my Publix. They're some of the nicest people. I was at a Publix that was not my Publix and was buying uh, distilled water. I needed distilled water. And the woman says, oh, uh, I, oh, and I was buying hydrogen peroxide too. I had to get hydrogen peroxide because I'm on blood thinner. And sometimes if, if, I, if I have a scratch or something on my head, if I start bleeding in the middle of the night, get blood on the pillow, you got to put hydrogen peroxide on it to get the blood out of the pillow case. Or my wife gets mad. So I got distilled water for a project I was working on. And then she says, oh, do you have cancer? I mean, literally, I'm like, she says, oh, you got cancer? I said, no, why? She says, oh, well, you know, I had cancer and and the treatment I used was uh, hydrogen peroxide and distilled water and I would drink it every day, uh, multiple times a day. And it flushed the cancer out of my system. I was like, oh, that is very interesting. I would like to subscribe to your newsletter. Please let me leave now. And the woman went on and on and on and on that she had, had read it from a friend who got it from a friend who found it on the internet that she was beyond cure and God bless her. She swears she had a, a form of cancer and this cure worked that chemo did not work. Radiation did not work, but this hydrogen peroxide and water. And then she said the thing that is so common these days for so many people to say, that really scientists know how to cure cancer, but the pharmaceutical companies don't want them to because they would lose money. I hear that so much from so many people, even the, the, the people about COVID. You know, we went in this weird, weird world where during the height of COVID, anyone who died 
the people who were very pro vaccines, oh, I bet they were unvaccinated and they died because of COVID. And now we're at this point where if anyone falls over dead, the unvaccinated, oh, I bet it was the COVID vaccine. I mean, it is literally the same group of people coming at it from different angles. You, you had the, up, oh, they died. They must not have gotten the vaccine to up. Oh, they died. They must have gotten the vaccine. It's the same group of, I saw it on the internet. I believe it because this person I trust told me everybody's fallen over dead because of the vaccine versus everyone's fallen over dead from COVID. People have so much information at their fingertips now, and they lack the ability to discern what is true and what is not true. And they lack the most important point of this. This comes from Donald Rumsfeld. The things we don't know, we don't know. Donald Rumsfeld, who I knew and liked, it was a wonderful, dear human being. He wrote his book, Known Unknowns. It was his book. A friend of mine helped him write it. And one of his great quotes is that there are things we know we know, and there are things we know that we don't know. There are also the things we don't know that we do know, and there are the things that we don't know we don't know. And the last two are the most dangerous because there are things we we know it, we just don't know we know it. The worst of them are the things we have so much information, we presume we know everything until it's too late. It's that thing we never knew that we didn't know that was relevant to the whole cause. And so many of us this day on the internet are are so uh, knowledgeable and know where to get information and can process the information and that we believe ourselves to understand something. And yet there are those unknowns out there that uh, we don't even know about that if we did, it would completely change our information and picture of where the world heads. So there, there's my monologue. I, 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 I all just let me let me just close out with this point, please. Humor me on this one, please. If I say please don't email me about X, Y, or Z, please respect me enough not to email me about X, Y, or Z. That's all I'm going to say. And now there's one more listener who will never again be able to email me. Okay, so now let's move on. Now that my tirade is over. Let, let's clear the air. Let, perfect segue to talk about the Eden Pure Thunderstorm because the three-pack is back. I told y'all BOGO was last week. It was only one week. It's the three-pack. You can get three of them for less than $200 right now. EdenPureDeals.com is the website. So they've changed things up. It used to be if you went to EdenPureDeals.com and you put in the discount code ERIC3, you get three of them for less than $200. Things have changed, boys and girls. Now you just use my name, Eric, and if they change their promo, you just put in Eric and it still works. So you go to EdenPureDeals.com and you put in Eric, E-R-I-C-K. You put in Eric, you get three Eden Pure Thunderstorms for less than $200. You're saving $200. You get free shipping and you're wondering what on earth is the Eden Pure Thunderstorm? Well, I'll tell you, it's an air purifier and it's filterless. You use a, It uses an ionized mag, uh, ionized plate and so you just wipe it out on occasion. It traps the pollen, it traps the dust, the mildew. More importantly, and the way I use it, it's an air purifying device that wipes out odors. So if you're in a stinky car, you got smoke odors, pet odors, litter box odors, what have you, you're like my great aunt Daisy who used to feed her cats there. They're like cat food out of the can in the back of her car. Blech. You could use the Eden Pure Thunderstorm and it would wipe out those odors, wipes them out. Smoke odors, frying odors, cooking odors, litter box odors, wipes out those odors. Get three of them for less than $200. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is just simply Eric, E-R-I-C-K. This is the program brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan. Wherever you are nationwide, you want your business to grow, they can probably help you reach out to them. FirstLibertyGA.com. FirstLibertyGA.com. Let's go to the phones, and you're going to be up next. Welcome to the show. Hi, Eric. Uh, I just wanted to expand on kind of what you were talking about. I, you know, frequent... Fox News online forums, and I always hear like Civil War 2.0, you blah, blah, blah. When really, it, if you know, the, the kind of the, the societal breakdown, I feel like is not going to come at the hands of any kind of opposition army with a, you know, political, the particular political ideology. I feel like the destruction is going to come at the hands of the most mentally kind of quote unquote affected. Um, they'll be the first to self-destruct. And because when our some total leadership and governance fails, 
they're the ones that need that leadership kind of the most and that steadiness and that structure. Um, since the inception of social media, I feel like it's kind of expedited, you know, this whole uh, mass psychosis in a yes. way. Yes. So yeah, I, I, I look, I, social media has a lot to do with it. Right. Yeah, so, and there's a, there's a, um, a report this weekend, and, and I, I want to talk about it a little bit later, but but the nutshell, and, and thanks for your phone call, is that in Pennsylvania, there's a, a family, a uh, husband and wife and their daughter, who they were Trump supporters, very, very, very devout Christians, and they became convinced, this husband, wife, and daughter, that they can't escape what's happening in the country. The country is, is falling down. It appears, uh, they believe that there was just, there's this exponential growth and evil in the country. And with Donald Trump, not there anymore, they could do nothing about it. And this weekend they all committed suicide. The wife shot the husband, the daughter shot the mom and then killed herself. So, um, Dad dies at mom's hands. Mom dies at daughter's hands. Daughter commits suicide. All three of them left notes essentially saying that uh, the country is irredeemable. There's no place else on earth to be, and they would rather escape to eternity than stick around. Deep mental health problem made worse by all of the the, the hullabaloo on, that is on social media on a daily basis now that – uh, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. There is no redemption. Uh, the other side of the aisle, they're, they're uh, the enemies and whatnot. I was actually at a meeting this weekend and was talking to a mem- new member of Congress, freshman, and he was talking about how the Democrats uh, in the House were, were the enemies. And I stopped him and said, Congressman, I know you are new here, and I don't mean to correct you, but just so you appreciate this, uh, the Democrats in the House of Representatives where you work, they are your opponents. They're not your enemies. The Senate, that's the enemy. He fell out laughing and said, yeah, I was absolutely right that, yes, the, the Democrats are just his opponents. The the Senate is the enemy. Um, you got to keep your perspective on these things. All right. When we come back, I had a very fascinating conversation with some economists uh, and uh, asset managers this weekend. And I want to tell you about what they said. I was actually kind of encouraged by what they said well, to get to it when we come back. Hello, it is Ryan. And I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.